Miles, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate that. How would you describe the state of democracy in America right now? I would have said five years ago, it would be very hyperbolic for anyone to come out publicly and say that democracy was under threat in the United States. Today, I don't think that statement is sufficient. I think that's the level of danger we're seeing to democracy right now, that a few decades away, this may not be a recognizable country if some serious changes are not undertaken in our electorate and if serious reforms are not undertaken in our politics. It's amazing, isn't it? There's, there's a real violence, a, a very aggressive edge to everything that comes back for expressing another opinion, a different opinion. Where does it end? Well, in the past few months, we've seen a number of polls, surveys, and studies come out that show that one in five Americans are now believers of the QAnon conspiracy theory. Another study recently showed that one in 10 Americans believe that violence is justified to restore Donald Trump to the White House. 10% of Americans believe it's worth taking up arms to go forcibly put Donald Trump back into the White House. Now, a back of the envelope estimation shows this is roughly a tenfold, a tenfold increase in attitudes towards political violence in the United States. This, this comes back to, the reason I come back to the election lie, or the so-called lie, perpetuating the stolen election lie, isn't that one of the things that keeps driving the violence and the aggressive behavior that, that is confronting hundreds of election officials and their families and people like you? I mean, one thing that we've learned about politics in general is that it's highly tribal. And in, in tribalism, it's very tough to pull people away from the cult that they are in, right? In fact, we know that folks are willing to discard pretty much any disconfirming information that tells them perhaps that the tribe they're in is wayward or that it's bad. So, you know, once folks are hooked on a notion, it's really tough to get them to peel off. Very fundamentally, political violence in any system, whether it's the United States or otherwise, typically crops up when people feel like the political system is unresponsive to them. They seek out violence. They seek out a way to force their viewpoint on a government and a society. This is what's happening in the United States. You have prominent figures, not just Donald Trump, but senior members of the Republican Party who are perpetuating a myth that the election was stolen. In other words, they're telling millions of Americans their vote didn't matter and it wasn't counted, it was ignored, that something was stolen from them. What that then leads to is popular approval of alternative methods, meaning let's go outside of the political process and use violence to get what we want. That's why we've seen this surge in positive attitudes towards political violence in the United States and so many people flocking to conspiracy theories that they are now mainstream is because they've been convinced that their vote doesn't matter, that the system is rigged, that it's broken. And that in and of itself is a falsehood, but it doesn't matter if prominent people they see and know and trust perpetuate it, they'll do the same. And it is being encouraged, Miles. I mean, we've now got Trump supporters, Trump acolytes who are running under the Trump banner, even for positions potentially as governor, as the governor of a state. We've got people like Kari Lake in Arizona who perpetuate that lie, continue that lie, despite zero evidence. That's dangerous, isn't it? It's incredibly dangerous. In fact, there are a lot of people in this country who worry about our democracy, who feel like the real fight was in 2020, that Donald Trump himself was the danger, and that now he's out of office, we're out of the woods, if you will. I will tell you this, we are not out of the woods. We're deeper in it than we've ever been because what happened is after Trump left office, Trumpism, if you will, broke into a thousand little pieces across the country. A thousand candidates running for different offices, public offices to pick up the mantle and carry on the mission. It's a lot harder to go after a thousand uh, you know, dangerous individuals than one. And that's what we're seeing 
in America's political process right now is people like Kerry Lake in Arizona, a very radical candidate for governor who not only subscribes to the lie that the election was stolen, which has been disproven over and over and over by every single analysis, but also encourages people to engage in more hostile behavior to one another, really frankly fans the, the flames of this political violence and openly embraces Trump. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.